So my role at the pier is actually you and I have kind of similar positions. Um, I'm uh, the executive director of the Santa Monica Pier Corporation. We handle all of the, the marketing and events at the pier, and that includes uh, r event rentals, people wanting to come in and have their events at the pier and produce their own, or events that we produce, like a, a locals night that we do on the third Thursday of every month, or our Pier 360 Beach Festival, which is a, an amazing event that is our fi official kickoff to summer and features paddleboard racing, as I mentioned before, and uh, swim races, beach volleyball, which originated right next to the pier, the, the doubles beach volleyball, and, uh, and skateboarding, and you know we have live music, and hula dancing, it's a wonderful kickoff to summer. And so our organization really handles all of that. What we, what we really try to focus on is the visitor experience, and how can we help enhance and, and uh, really provide, help people with a, with a very memorable experience at the pier. I think what, um, one of the things that I find most fascinating about you you know, in addition to you being the keeper of the history of this place, is that you sort of came of age here. You, in, in some ways, you kind of grew up here. I did. You know, I, I, um, I came to the pier in 1989, fresh out of college. I was supposed to go to law school, but needed a year off to really think about that. And I ended up taking a, a bartending job at the old Boathouse restaurant, which at that time was the, the most popular business on the pier you know there was no west end there was no amusement park there was the boathouse and it's live music and uh, so I I cut my teeth as a bartender and what I learned then and I think that was probably the most impactful thing for me was um, I learned that as a bartender the best way to make a buck is to listen to people and at that time there were these people that we all referred to as old timers I'm about their age now um, who had come in and and they would tell stories of what the pier used to be like. And I just fell in love with that. You know, it, there's so much rich history here. And, and I, I fell in love with that. And I really, you know, the pier became my home and, and my family. The people who worked at, at the pier have been my family for 34 years now. Wow. Yeah. Are people better than we are? Yeah. I'm the executive director of the Santa Monica History Museum. It's a fairly new role for me. Uh, I served on the board of directors of the museum for a long time, chair of the board of directors of the museum for a long time. Um, I've been sort of a, a serial nonprofit board member in Santa Monica for a while. Um, I, you know, I've been in the newspaper business. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and you know, I, I sort of figured out that what I really wanted to do uh, with my time uh, was to spend that uh, doing something that benefited this community that I love um, and that has given so much to me. And so uh, I, I took this role at this organization that I'd served on the board on for a really long time. And, you know, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, uh, I, I think that the pier is perhaps our, our most treasured um, community asset here in Santa Monica. But you know, we, we've got uh, we've got an incredibly this land has an incredibly long history that dates back thousands of years. Of course, you know, um, the the keepers of this land, the, the Tongva people, have an incredibly rich history. Um, and then this the, this municipality, which next year will celebrate 150 years as a city, um, you know, has an incredible history as well. It does. And, and one one part I like about your personal history here at the pier and in Santa Monica is you proposed to your wife at one of our Twilight concerts yeah. on, on the pier. And yeah. Very memorable experience. Yeah, you know, the concerts are really special to me um, for a bunch of reasons. You know, uh, when I worked at the Santa Monica Daily Press, I worked with your organization um, uh, as, as a part of the, the concert series. Uh, and so, you know, I'd been going for years. Uh, and, you know, one, one day in 2014, one random Thursday, um, <laughs> I, I met my wife, Lisa, organically. Um, doesn't really happen a lot anymore. There, there was no app involved. We just like ran into <laughs> one another. That's like weird now. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and 10 years later, uh, we have an 18 month old son. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we, you know, uh, three years after we met, uh, I proposed on stage, thanks to you and all your <laughs> colleagues. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, this, this place will always be really special 
to, to me and my family. Yeah, it really, really gets into you, the, the pier and, and actually all of the Santa Monica, the, the beach community I think really does. I think one person who, who I'm, I've known from the pier from 30 years ago uh, described it to me as, uh, as um, you have deck boards for bones and salt water for blood. When you're when you're a peer rat, as we all kind of referred to ourselves, and I really thought that was beautiful, and I consider you a peer rat just like uh, me. So your bones must be deck boards, and your blood salt water. Probably. Yeah. Locals Night is a concept that we came up with a couple of years ago, two years ago, almost exactly now. Um, the idea of one of our board members, you know, so for, for years, every time we'd get new board members in, there always seemed to be a mention of, uh, of what can we do to draw m more of the local community to the pier. There's this perception that locals weren't visiting the pier. And so finally we had a board member that came in not only with that question, but ideas. And one of his ideas was uh, was a locals' night, a monthly locals' night, and so we immediately hopped onto that idea, made it happen. And it's uh, the concept of it is that it's by locals for locals. So all of our entertainment and activities are by Santa Monica organizations or Santa Monica individuals. If it's a band, if it's a, say it's a, a band, a teenage band, you know, trying to make it in the in the rock and roll world, if you will, <laughs> at least one member has to live in Santa Monica. And then, of course, the four locals part is really we, our marketing is, is focused toward the, the local community, the Santa Monica community. Anybody can come. We're not going to tell anybody they can't come to the pier. But what we're really trying to do is give the pier back to the local community. Right. And so by fostering those local connections, you hope that, you know, the, those folks that are performing, those folks that are exhibiting, whatever it is you imagine, they're bringing their community out. There. Exactly. You know, I think one of the best examples is uh, last year, the local junior high school, John Adams Middle School, or I'm sorry, last year the local middle school, John Adams Middle School, uh, performed Greece. You know, they, they had their annual theatrical performance of Greece, and we had the cast come down and, and sing Greece songs to the public, and, and with them, of course, came their families and friends to see their kids perform one more time, and, and that's exactly, that's the beauty of Locals Night, really. People can get involved with the with the Santa Monica Peer Corporation um, in, in a new way. Actually, you know, for our organization has existed since 1983, and there's long been the perception that our organization is part of the city of Santa Monica, or at least heavily funded by the city of Santa Monica, and um, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Actually, we've never. We've never been a part of the city of Santa Monica. We've always been a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was um, that our our board is appointed by the city council, but we're not really city. We work with the city, but we are not part of the city. And up until the pandemic hit, we were actually quite well subsidized by the city. But our grant has been cut back, understandably. You know, the city's got to make ends meet too, and it's so our grant got cut back drastically. And now we are uh, we're an organization that has relied a lot on rental, event rental income. But what we, re what we really should be doing is, since we want to engage with the community so much and, and, and work on the visitor experience, and, and we know that people love the pier and really want to be a part of the pier in, in different aspects, as well as helping, to, helping us to develop that pier visitor experience, I think through their own experiences, we're going to start really leaning on our nonprofit status and we're going to have our first ever annual fundraising gala. Uh, we will be participating in uh, campaigns to, uh, as, such as Giving Tuesday, you know, the, the annual Giving Tuesday, a lot like what you do. You know, in fact, I'll probably be leaning on you for some advice. <laughs> but we're going, to, uh, we're going to take people's love of the pier, accept people's love of the pier, and translate into that into ways that can make the pier something that everybody can continue to enjoy. That's great, Jim. You know, I think um, obviously, as you know, stewards of nonprofit organizations, one of our 
biggest challenges is fundraising. So, you know, we really need the community's support to attend your event, to, you know, think about, you know, if they run an organization to consider this as a potential place to rent space and then just yeah. to donate, right? Right. Right. And, you know, we really, we really, so what I'm donating to you is, you know, museum <laughs> artifacts and, and documents. And I, I like that we can work together like that. And um, so I, well, I'll be leaning on your experience for, for donation programs and, and a gala. I think um, we, we have a, a very mutually beneficial relationship and I consider you really part of the Peer family and I hope you consider me part of the Peer history, the Santa Monica History family. Absolutely, definitely part of the Santa Monica History Museum family. I feel honored to be part of the Peer family. And of course, I'll help in any way I can. Our mission is to preserve the rich history of the Santa Monica Bay Area, um, and you know what we you know we try to do that in three ways. We, you know we, we we want to engage the community. Um, we want to be a, a really important member of the education community, um, and you know I think most importantly we want to create a space that's inclusive. We want everybody in the community to feel connected to the stories that we tell, and we want to create a sense of belonging. And so. Uh, we're just coming off of uh, an exhibition called Coming Out West, LGBTQ plus elders tell their stories. So we gathered in cooperation with the Outwards Archive, uh, eight uh, elders from the LGBTQ plus community and, and they're all connected to the Santa Monica Bay Area. And they told you their personal stories through video. You literally would walk up to a wall, put a set of headphones on and they would tell you their story, including People that a lot of Santa Monicans know, like one of the first out lesbian mayors in the country, uh, Judy Abdo, yeah. to people that the whole country knows, uh, Chuck Williams of the Williams Institute, um, to people that you don't know who just have incredibly compelling personal stories. So that was an amazing exercise in the power of oral histories and personal narratives. And I'm really excited about the next exhibition that we're presenting, and, and that's called Unhoused, and that's a right. history of housing in Santa Monica. So we're gonna talk about uh, structures that uh, Tongva people built thousands of years ago all the way to what Santa Monica looks like structurally today and of course the affordability crisis um, and and the, the, the population of folks who are uh, experiencing housing insecurity um, and you know all of the policies that have shaped uh, housing in Santa Monica today so we're going to carry that uh, all the way through uh, 2024 and then you know, another piece that we're really excited about is uh, our Quinn Gallery. So in cooperation with the uh, Quinn Research Center, which they're the keepers of black family history and culture in Santa Monica, one mm -hmm. of the keepers of black family history and culture in Santa Monica, we've created a space for black family history and culture inside of the museum. And so in that space uh, coming up uh, on February 1st, we're gonna present the story of Vernon Brunson, uh, incredible man who is uh, in, uh, a building designer, designed a number of important buildings in Santa Monica. Um, he was a polymath, li lifelong learner, uh, engineer, pilot, a remarkable renaissance man, oh, if yeah. you will, and we're gonna, we're gonna tell his story. That's fantastic. You know, I've always appreciated the museum as a, as a research facility. Um, and thank you, there are some images of yours in, in the previous book and in the upcoming edition of the book, and I really appreciate uh, your team having that so well organized and easy for researchers like myself and also just for preserving what are really incredible images. Well, thanks. I mean, digitation, di digitization is, is, is no light lift <laughs> uh, and it has taken us years uh, to, to take, you know, we, we have the entire uh, Bill Beebe collection from the Outlook, Super which valuable. is just a treasure. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we have over 10,000 uh, images um, and it, it's taken us years to, you know, get those all cataloged and we, you know, maybe 80% of them, uh, the work's not even close to done, but yeah, I mean, you know, we've uh, unbelievable archive thanks to the generosity of many community members who've donated that over the years to us. Speaking of which, now that the second edition of the Peer History book is behind me, you know, um, I have a lot to donate to you. A lot, of, a lot of things that have been donated to our organization, they really more belong in, in the protective care of the Santa Monica History Museum. 
Oh, it's an honor. So it's thank, a lot thank of boxes. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break the news lightly <laughs> to the staff. <laughs> The, the Santa Monica Pier Corporation's plans for 2024, we're actually, uh, for the first time in several years, putting together a three-year vision plan. And, uh, and within that is, we're laying out the foundation for the gala that I mentioned before and focusing on our nonprofit status. Uh, we are also about to, uh, to have some, uh, some kiosks, electronic kiosks. They're being placed all over Santa Monica. We're getting two of those here at the pier, and we're, we're very excited about the opportunities that those present. I've done some outreach over the past couple of years to, to broaden the Piers connection worldwide with other like venues. And so we have a, a great relationship with Brighton Palace Pier in, in the UK, which is really the granddaddy of all the amusement park piers. A great relationship now with uh, Navy Pier in Chicago, the other end of Route 66. And uh, we're, we're starting to reach out to other venues and to try and bring the, the world together in a way that, that I recognized when we were all in quarantine. You know, when we were in the COVID-19 quarantine, none of us could connect with one another except through Zoom, right? Yeah. And so what I see ultimately is the, the potential for these kiosks, these electronic kiosks, which will have a camera function to be able to connect us with other venues around the world. And so I want to start expanding that. Now that's not just 19, or not just 2024, but that is something that we're going to start laying the groundwork for is these relationships and ultimately the, the goal of, of connecting everyone through video. So that people who can't, maybe cannot ever visit the Santa Monica Pier can experience it from wherever they are. That's really fun. It is really fun. We're doing everything that we can to make the space as inclusive as possible. And so um, one of our newer programs and something that we've done uh, the past two years really successfully, I know this is something that you've done as well, um, is a Dia de los Muertos program. Yeah. So we invite students in from Santa Monica High School and from Venice High School. Last year we had Fairfax High School, Culver City High School, and University High School participating as well. And those students came in and built altars. Um, and then we had uh, a couple of days of public programming to open the portals and close the portals and they were on view for the public for three weeks. That'll be popping up again, which will be really neat. Great. The other thing that we're gonna do during the summer is uh, we're gonna have a pop-up exhibition on uh, Mexican-American history as it relates to California. And that'll be like a much more broad look at California history and not as much at specifically the Santa Monica Bay Area. But that's an exhibition that's gonna be on loan to us from California Humanities that we're gonna have in our lobby during the summertime. So that'll be really exciting too. That will be exciting. And, and you mentioned Dia de los Muertos. It's become, quickly become my favorite holiday. I, I think it has more meaning than any other holiday on the calendar year, specifically for, for what you and I do. You know, it's a way that people can honor their ancestors. And for me, it's a way that I can honor people who've been a part of the peers past. So when we do Dia de los Muertos, there is that very specific section a very specific altar that that, um, that honors those people. But it's such a, a beautiful, heartfelt holiday that I don't think any of our other traditional American holidays can really compare to. I agree. You know, it's, it's such a beautiful way to celebrate, you know, I mean, I think the most, at least I, I feel that the most meaningful things we take away from this experience as people are our relationships. Yeah. It might be the only thing. Um, and so to have that day set aside where we can, you know, honor those people who've been so important and impactful to us in our lives and remember them, I think is really powerful. So I have a new edition, a second edition of the Santa Monica Pier History book coming up in, uh, we're going we're gonna to release that in April of this year. And, uh, you know, the, the original edition came out in 2009, you, you may remember, uh, to celebrate the Pierce Centennial. Uh, this new book, this second edition, will actually be 50 pages longer, hardbound, a, a very elegant presentation. Um, the original was, uh, it was very festive, you know, to celebrate the, the Centennial. And uh, this new edition will be mo much more like a collector's item. 
a really a beautiful book. Uh, I'm so impressed with what Angel City Press, the publishers, have done. And uh, those extra 50 pages have long been necessary because <laughs> when, uh, when we first released the original Peer History book, I thought I had the history down, right? Um, and, and so did a lot of other people. But suddenly, out of the woodwork come these people with these fantastic other stories that I had never known before. And so instantly I began regretting, <laughs> you know, not having that material in the book. And so now, 15 years later, I finally get the opportunity to, to complete the story. And that's what this new book, the opportunity for this new book is really offered. And it's really going to be a beautiful book. I mean, not to give it away for everybody, but what, what's, what, what, which one of those stories stands out for you? Oh, it has to be probably the, the development of the paddleboard racing. You know, paddleboard racing started here at the Santa Monica. The use of paddleboards in general, the hollow paddleboards, were introduced by Tom Blake, the creator of the hollow paddleboard. He came from Hawaii and uh, to the mainland United States to have hollow paddleboards produced. And uh, he found a company in Venice, and while they were making his boards, he temporarily signed on as a Santa Monica lifeguard and introduced paddle boards to the lifeguards, where they used them as, uh, as of course, life-saving tools, but certainly caught the public's eye. They were like, well, we want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the clubs up and down the beach, the private clubs actually formed teams and would compete right in, right in the bay, right next to Santa Monica Pier. And then there was a, a group of people, of course, that couldn't afford what the, the private beach clubs could, and they formed their own public team, you know, where anybody could come and, and rent paddle boards and participate and race against these private clubs. And so there was a group called the, originally called Huey Myokioki, and ultimately renamed to the less tongue-twisting Manoa Paddleboard Club. And just that story of, of the development of racing and then, and then the, what the Manoa Paddleboard Club did with paddleboarding, they created paddleboard water ballet and, really? and paddleboard, um, paddleboard water polo, you know, and all these things. Wow. And it really started to, it became a draw at the pier. And people like Burgess Meredith and Johnny Weissmuller wanted to be a part of that club and they would, they would um, participate with the club. Johnny Weissmuller would train to get in shape with, uh, for his Tarzan movies with, uh, with young Dottie Hawkins, the, the, the most featured one of the, one of the paddleboard club members. Just a really fascinating story that I hadn't known in 2009, but I know so well today. I, paddleboarding should have been part of the Rocky training montage. Burgess Meredith should have gotten <laughs> Stallone out there. Right, it should have. You should have made him. You should have shown him how. Right. I can see old Burgess Meredith teaching Rocky how to paddleboard. <laughs> oh, my favorite memories of the pier. Out of 34 years, how do I, how do I choose one? I think my favorite memory of the pier has to be day one. The day that I walked into the Boathouse restaurant, to the, I had known the owner from when I lived back in Colorado, and uh, she invited me to the Boathouse for dinner when she found out I was living here. And ironically, um, I had earlier turned her down for a job, not knowing what the Santa Monica Pier was, you know, um, and certainly not wanting to work in the restaurant business. But <laughs> after trying trying to find a job for a few months, or a few weeks actually. Um, when I sat, when I took, when I accepted the invitation for dinner, I thought that's all it was going to be, was dinner. And I arrived and she recommended that I learn how to tend bar from this awesome bartender that she had working for her at that time. And knowing, in her words, I know you don't want to work for me, you've already turned me down for a job but you can list on your resume that you, you've worked for me for six months and, and I'll back you up, I'll say yes. Just go learn from this guy because he's really good. So I go learn how to ten bar for about two hours and then she calls me over for dinner and it's a dinner with a bunch of her friends which I didn't know that, that was going to be the case. People that I didn't know. And there's the table of, it's an eight person table, seven people have placemats in front of them, paper placemats and she sits me at the seat that does not have a placemat. And she's sitting across from me, and she said, asked me what I thought of Tending Bar. I said, I enjoyed it. I'll take you up on your offer to, to you know, back me up on my resume. And she said, okay. And then she pulls out the other paper placemat, 
and on the back of it is a schedule. And she says, this is the last time I'll ever offer you a job. And at that point, I had to accept. <laughs> There are people who sometimes question whether or not the pier is a safe place. And I can tell you from my experience that there was a time when the pier was not a safe place. When I started working here, I was, I was 23 years old, and uh, the pier was a completely different atmosphere. There was a lot of gang activity. The, there was a, a tent city of homeless people underneath the pier. And it was a, a really, it was a really rough place. And for a 23-year-old kid, it was actually kind of fun, you know? <laughs> it, was like, it was like, you know, we're, we're at the edge of the world, and I often say, you know, the pier's at the edge of the world, and crazy can't go any farther. Yeah. Um, and those, those were some crazy days. But um, ever since the pier has uh, developed into a family-friendly venue, it has become much, much safer. We're still at the edge of the world, and crazy still can't go any farther, but the Santa Monica Pier is, is as safe as anywhere else in, in I think the Los Angeles area, in fact, probably safer than a lot of areas. Yeah, you know, I, I'd, I'd have to agree with that as a parent. Um, you know, I, I've, I've brought my, my little son here a number of times. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're here on this beautiful sunny day today watching families have fun um, here in Pacific Park and all over the pier and all over the beach. And, you know, I think that, um, the, you know, Jim, you and I know a lot of our really committed public safety professionals, we do. police officers here, and, you know, they're, I think they're the finest anywhere. Um, and so I think a lot of credit goes to them for, you know, creating this environment. I think that particularly our public safety professionals work a lot on engaging the community. I think they're really good at their jobs. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't have the same perspective of this being the place that it was and maybe having been unsafe at one point, but, you know, for the last 20 years that you know, I've, I've lived here, I think this has been an incredibly safe space. It has, and you know, we do have a very good police presence, and we have a 24-hour presence from their department with the Harbor Patrol, so there's always eyes and ears that are making sure that the pier is a, a good, safe place to visit.